All right, it's my 87 Chevrolet, Chevrolet R10. This is what we got going on today though. We got these JX MSD 8.5 wires here. And this wire, these wires have been on here since the beginning of my setup. As you can see here, I got the boots on here and these boots look like crap. You see them? At nighttime, you know, I've noticed sometimes there be little, little like Northern lights flashing through these wires. So I think I'm getting some arcing going on somewhere. When I first crank it up, it's been real rich here lately. Getting some, feel like misfiring at the top of the RPM ranges when I'm out driving in the street. So I'm going, I'm going to change these wires out. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. What I ordered in place of the MSD 8.5s. Ta-da! Ordered a vibrant performance professional fabrication component. Some boots, some insulated insulation boots. Got eight of those. These about 16 bucks a piece. If you get them in a bigger set than that, it's gonna be more expensive. So you'd be better off getting them in a little eight piece like that. All right, I opted for the Jags brand wires because MSD probably make them, who knows? The only thing about these JX wires is if you get the JX brand wires, they do not come with the crimping tool, okay? They come with everything else. All right, the crimping tool I already have from where I ordered my, my MSD wires in the past. So I didn't need that. A little messy in there, a little messy in there. But this is the crimping tool you're gonna need. You can use a vise to make these crimps happen. Or you can use some good old, big old pliers. I've used the pliers in the past and they work phenomenal, okay? So that's what we're gonna be using this time too. A good reason to go with these wires is so that you can cut down on the mess in the engine compartment. You cut the wires to the size that you need for each side and it allows you to install the boots with no problem. You can slide the boot in, make sure you slide the boot in on all the wires first and you just go from there. I mean, it's just simple, easy breezy, okay? So, I'm gonna get started. You guys just pay attention, all right? So as I can see, I got the Goya 5 system still hooked up on here by Fitech. It's the, it's Goya 5 600 horsepower. Um, so far, so good. You know, I opted for this over the TBI system because, I mean, TBI is so 80s, you know? And this here is something new, it's supposed to be more efficient, be better for cold starts and things of that nature, which it is. So I prefer to have more control over my fuel injection system over conventional old, older methods, which alone in itself is an awesome reason to go with it. it. Allows you the ability to monitor more sensors and things of that nature. So it's just a no brainer as far as going with it. And as far as more power, also more power, you know, um, you got bigger throughout you got bigger on um, venturis and everything in the inside of this baby more air getting into the motor so it's just a win-win i mean it's just more more new more new age you know it's just more current more better technology so if you're on the edge of rather you should go with the go efi system over your conventional tbi if you have the means of doing so it's mm, no better idea than to switch it up and go with the better option. All right. As you can see, I, I threw on my, my HEI distributor. Problem that I ran into is I still have my original distributor over here. electronic distributor over here the problem I ran into with this baby here is the bronze gear all right the bronze gear and the iron cam is not a mate for each other 
All right, so overtime, this is what happened. The gearing just got ate up, and one day it just gave up, and it went out on me. So I lost timing and everything. I stranded on the side of the road. So this is what I recently ordered from Jags. Just got to throw it back on there and get that baby thrown back inside the truck. I'm going to start by taking out all these wires in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, this is this wire this one here I can barely get even I can't even get to it really to be honest Try to come around here bitch to put back on I can promise you that side one out the way YouTube game, we got this thing out of here. We got all the wires loose from the from the block. It's trying to be delicate, you know. I got this header wrap on here. I don't want to damage that up too bad. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing. Get this thing taken care of. Let's get these wires off the caps. Keep in mind, I've already taken a picture of the distributor and the wires laid out on it so that I know exactly how to go back on. Next thing I want to do is wash my hands because I'm about to be handling my new wires and I don't want to get them all dirty. Okay, so let's get them washed. All right, check it out, YouTube family. This is what it is right here. 
I just arrange my wires in the order of what's going to be the longest, just so I can get started with the basics, such as putting my boots on my own, my fabric, uh, my wire insulators on. So. So I can at least go ahead and number all the wires. Got a general idea of where they're gonna go, and then as I install them, I'm gonna cut them, cut them to fit a whole uh, a lot better. You know, get them nice and tight. So I'm gonna install one of these on each one of the wires. Um, you wanna install this side first. Have the seam at the top. Just like so. And we're going to repeat this step eight times. These are some very high quality boots, by the way. Unlike the ones you see there, you see what happens to these over time. And they're nowhere near the thickness of these right here. This is header wrap pretty much. Just one layer of header wrap with foil on top, sewed together. That's it. Better way to avoid from trying to figure out whether or not you put it on there already. Just go ahead and throw all the boots on at the top. So all you gotta do is slide them down. And you won't mistakenly put it on the wrong one which you already applied a boot to. So, got them all on, pick it up, slide them on down. Voila, like so. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna get your numbers, which it comes with numbers already. I was gonna take the MSD numbers off. I like the quality of these a lot better, but I don't have MSD wires and why well, go through the extra work of removing those only to reapply them when I got some already off. So I'm gonna get this stuff poured out and I'm gonna get these things numbered up, all right? So what we got over here, we got five, one, seven, and eight. Eight being the shortest wire, so. Eight and seven, shortest wires, so. This would be eight and seven right here. Yeah, you can clip these on, but. You got options, but it's a lot easier to clip them on. Okay, if you know your shorter wires are extremely short, go ahead and put those numbers up real close, okay? Because this is a side right here that's gonna be up here by your spark plug, so. If you're seeing that your wires are already short as hell, like this right here, why put them at the end when you're only gonna have to remove them again anyway? So go ahead and clip them up high around the area where you already have them on your other wires so that you can, cause you already know you're gonna have to clip all this off to even get close to where this is currently at. So just a tidbit. Eight, seven, five and one. All right, that's where we at right now. I just got this side uh, routed. And I got the wires ran up there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run them how I want to. And then I'm gonna cut the wires after I get them routed so that I can make the wires as short as possible without being too short in case I need some room for maneuverability in the future. So stay tuned. We're getting ready to go over here to the passenger side of the engine bay. and. 
these wires thrown up in there. Okay, so let's get to it. And this is how it's looking right here. I got my wires ran up on the side, coming midway across the valve cover. I got my numbers right there, as you can see, all side by side. I got my heat shields, like so, coming up the side right there. Same thing over here. I'm going to order something. I'm going to come up with some concoction to bring these wires up so they stay in place, like so. All right. So it's not just hung over or moving every time I take off. Same over here. Um, but yeah, as you can see, that's, that's what I got right there. So I'm about to go ahead and take these boots right here. See this bag of boots? So the stuff over here. Go ahead and start getting that stuff on these wires and show you the finished product. So stay tuned. Peace. Check it out guys, just finished cutting the ends off. What I, I use is a, you just need a razor blade, like a regular razor blade, um, like so. Put it half an inch below the top of the wire and just do a perfect circle around it. You will feel it when it hits the core, because the core is a lot harder and you just want to stop at that point. But I'll demonstrate real quick what you need to do. Take your razor, half an inch from the top. What I use to cut the wires, I use these here to cut the wires, but you could get something that does a much cleaner cut. And if you actually buy the tool for it, it'll do it exactly how it should be as far as the tip and everything. But if you're doing it by hand, you just get a good eye. You don't force it, you just roll the wire on the razor. And it'll feel It'll come to a stop and it'll feel like it's moving freer. And you just do a perfect little circle. You look at it from the from a far view like I'm doing, like so. You see you're coming up on that line. You just make sure you maintain an angle that's gonna land you right there on the edge of that line. And just spin it around until it's turning real easy. I can feel it a lot freer now. Just feels like it's ready. All right, so at that point, I'm just going to tug it a little bit, make sure I can see the core. And you can actually kind of pry it a little bit just to walk it up. Make sure all the white insulation is broken so it doesn't hold it. And at that point, you can use your finger and just pry it off. It's that easy. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead over here and let you see this process here. that the MSD wires for some reason I recall them working a lot better during this process than these JX wires are so maybe the MSDs are crimped differently has a different bend to them slightly than these wires do here but I just want to make sure I put this on correctly so that it's not all twisted up when it's at the distributor so I'm looking at my base here and these here the MSD wires they are made differently where the wire go into a little choke and you crimp it but with these JX wires it's not made like that you have to bend the wire back like so so I do like this and I bend the wire back like that it's no need to be that far up just right there this one I actually cut a little tiny bit too big because it wouldn't be that much overhang if it was right. But it's good enough though. So I'm just going to 
make sure my wire is going to apply right. And at this point, I'm going to take some pliers and just snug up. Just snug these on a little closer so that they can hold the wire in place. so that they can go into the wire vise. I'll try to round it off a little bit so that it can create this indention a lot easier. See, I just gave it a little round so it's not flat so that when it goes into this crevice here on this wire crimping tool, crimping tool here it has that little crease in there that's what's going to make this force itself into the wire so if you can assist that process so that it doesn't cause any turbulence it'll make it a lot easier but looking at this it looks like I need to push it in a little more because it's not falling in there like I like it to make this whole process easier I'm just going to take my pliers and kind of snug it up a little bit more Right, so it should fall right up in there now. Like that good thing thing, you know, you just want to fall right up in there. That's how you want this thing to be. Just want to fall right up in there. I apply my little MSD vise. You want to make sure this thing stays flush like so. And then I'm going to use my big pliers. And apply some torque. Let's see how it looks. Alright, so as you can see, it's Got a good start. I need to apply a little bit more torque to my pliers. So what I'm going to do is take it to the next step because that's pretty maxed out right there. That's how you want to do it though. You don't want to go to the torquiest port setting because you will cause a lot of force on this thing and it can cause the wire to shift or turn or something like that. So by applying a little bit and going to the next step, it'll work out a lot better. So let's see if it acts right this time and doesn't twist. Alright, that worked a whole lot better than the previous ones I did because I didn't go straight to that setting right there trying to plow that torque. I started with the previous setting, then I went to the next. But with this crimper, it's still not doing as good a job as it did with the MSD wires. It's applying more force, it appears, to one side. So I'm still having to take my pliers and kind of form one side which is causing me a lot of time, but when it's yours, you want it done right, so. That's the dilemma I have here, I'm not doing it for nobody else. <laughs> All right, that should be good enough. I wanna show you that process. Go ahead and knock the rest of these out and show you the end process. What we got going on is where, well, I just finished applying the boots to the spark plug wires. As you can see, I got one more left to go. Just want to make sure you don't miss out on all the fun. Silicone, which comes with the spark plug wires, you apply a little bit of it to the inner side, inside of the boot, like so. And just smush it together. So you get some silicone all around there. Just get your wire and just push that baby on in there. You 
you watch the inside of your boot, making sure that it comes through straight. Don't necessarily apply force to the sides here when you're holding it. Apply it to the top of the boot so that it can slide in there easily. It's a little crooked, so I'm just applying a little twist to it so it can slide in at a, and get straight. And there we have it. Everything is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get this baby connected to the distributor. All right, YouTube family, your boy is back. Just got this thing wrapped up. This is the end result right here. Uh, got my wires ran. Pretty clean configuration right there. All right, so yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with the outcome. Now it's time to get it crunk up and try to get this timer situated. You know, just try to get it, try to make sure everything is squared away. Look at that, my baby's sitting so long, it's got cobwebs all over it. What the hell? But yeah, just know I'm over here working. I'm trying to keep you guys posted on what's going on with this baby right here. Um, next video I'm going to start working on is my C-Series right there. We're going to do an a installation of a dash cam. We got a dash cam right here. I think we're a dash cam. We're going to get that baby wired up. We're going to do a hard wire installation. So stay tuned for that. This is your boy C-Spec Kurt. And I'm out of here. Peace.